Okay. So, um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the uh, webinar today. Uh, some ground rules here. Uh, let's see, please use chat for comments. If you have a question, you can post it in Q&A. Um, we'll take questions at the end, but you can enter them at any point. And um, what else? We are being recorded. Okay, so this is the second webinar in the series. This is for uh, um, Galaxy Resources for educators and trainers. In two weeks, we have Galaxy Resources for tool developers. So if you're a tool developer, think about joining us for that, okay? Let's see. Um, so today we have five speakers and it's really an all-star cast. And here's what we're gonna cover today. Um, Saskia, who's one of the founders of the Galaxy Training Network, is going to give us an overview. And then we're going to have um, five presentations with examples of uh, teaching with Galaxy and what the cool resources are. So we're going to walk through this as we go. It should come in right around an hour. We sure hope. Um, and let's give that a go. So GTN for instructors. Um, Saskia has a conflict right now. So this is pre-recorded, but she will be here for Q and A. So let's play that. And I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go here full screen. Okay, and if you can't hear Saskia, um, type something in chat and I will panic. Hi everybody. My name is Saskia Hilteman. I work at the Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And together with Bernice Batu and Helena Rasche, we have spent a lot of time optimizing the GTN for instructors, which is what I'm going to talk to you uh, about today. Um, so first of all, why should you use Galaxy for teaching? So there are a lot of features in Galaxy which make it ideal for teaching. Um, first of all, it enables students to focus on the science instead of the technical details of the tools. So they don't have to worry about typing the exact right command in the command line, worrying about where the spaces go, things like that. Um, this is also a very useful uh, skill but that can be taught in a different class. Um, but if you really want to focus on the science, on the bioinformatics concepts, uh, Galaxy is perfect because it abstracts away that technical layer. Um, there's also no installation required, so students, all they need is a browser and an internet connection to, to participate. And of course, in the Galaxy uh, Training Network, we have a huge library of free to use, high quality tutorials, uh, which you as an educator can reuse in your classes. Um, Galaxy also has a ton of visualization tools uh, and uh, visualization options, so you can visualize your results uh, and the workflows themselves. It's also very easy to share data uh, in, in Galaxy. So um, you can share your uh, results with your students uh, and you can have them share it back. So for example, if they get stuck anywhere and they, they need some help, you can they can share their history with you. You can have a look and help them get back on track. So all this really uh, supports remote teaching as well. And there is also a thing called TIAs, Training Infrastructure as a Service, uh, that lets you really uh, follow the progress of remote students. Uh, but more about that later. And there's a lot more. So Galaxy, of course, has a ton of different tools. I think there are around 8,000 tools in the Galaxy Toolshed right now across a, a bunch of different scientific domains. Uh, something that's also very cool is you can combine Galaxy with various programming environments, such as Jupyter and RStudio. So if you also want to teach, um, analysis using some coding with Python or R. You can do all of that without leaving Galaxy. Um, there are shared data libraries where you can imp uh, share input data sets for, for tutorials. So um, students don't have to each individually download the, those input data sets and re-upload them to Galaxy. It's all already there. And there are also a bunch of interactive tools in Galaxy such as genome browsers or other visualizations that support more interactive uh, exploration of the data and playing around getting a feel for the data. And of course a really nice thing is there's a very large global community of Galaxy instructors who you can discuss with, ask for help, things like that. It's really really a nice community. 
Now, as I said, we have a large catalog of tutorials available in the GTN. So you can always find the, the latest stats um, by typing slash stats behind the um, GTN website. Currently, we have close to 200 tutorials uh, made by over 170 different contributors uh, across 21 different topics. So we currently have 16 different scientific topics and five technical topics. So you see here the scientific topics range from anything from biology, we, have, we also have climate, uh, we have statistics and machine learning, um, and new things are added uh, all the time. And this graph is one I really love. So you see that um, constantly new contributors are adding their tutorials and this community is really growing. Um, and all these tutorials are, are completely free to use in your classes, uh, in your events, whatever you want. Um, and they're all designed to also be suitable for self-study. So students can also just go there, explore, find a tutorial they're interested in, and work through everything themselves without uh, help of an instructor. And uh, we always welcome new contributors. So if you um, want to teach, uh, want to add your own tutorials uh, here for teaching, then you can do that too. Now, this is the homepage of the GTN tutorial website. You can find it at training.galaxyproject.org. And here you see it starts with a list of all the topics. Um, and you see how many tutorials are in each topic. And here you can start to explore and find different uh, tutorials. <laughs> and on the right side, you see the bottom of the page. We have a really nice uh, new welcome video that explains a little bit more about the GTN. So I would encourage you to watch it. And also um, a video here describing how you can connect with the Galaxy community. And there's some, some latest news, so whenever there are new tutorials or new features, you can read about those here. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter. Now, each of these GTN tutorials uh, usually follows a scientific story. So a lot of the time we take a published analysis and we recreate this step by step. So we go over um, all the relevant concepts, the science behind everything, and we have hands-on sections that really explain what to do in Galaxy, so exactly where to click, which tools to open, which parameters to set, uh, and explaining why you're setting these parameters, and things like that. Um, and all these tutorials are designed with teaching in mind from the start. So at the top of every tutorial, you will see a box like this, an overview box, which describes some learning objectives, some questions that are addressed during the tutorial, a prerequisite training, an estimate of how long this will take, level, and link to supporting materials. So some tutorials might come with slides. Uh, most of them have some input data sets, um, the full workflow of everything that's done in the entire tutorial. And there's a list of all the galaxies um, you can go to to run this tutorial. And at the end of the tutorial, there's a similar box describing the key points, the conclusions, just some take home messages that the students um, will have learned during the tutorial. And there's a section with some references for further learning. Now, another thing that we have uh, are question boxes. So throughout the tutorial, you will see these kinds of boxes uh, asking some questions and the solution is also included. It's collapsed by default. Um, so students can look at the questions, have to think, um, try to formulate an answer, and then they can check if they were correct. And of course, this also helps you as a teacher to maybe get some ideas of how to check your students' comprehension. Uh, this is a really cool feature. I think Dave showed it last week as well. But if you go to Galaxy and you click on this top hat uh, or this um, graduation cap, it will open the GTN website. Here you can browse to different tutorials you might want to uh, follow. And if you click outside that box again, you will go back to Galaxy, you can do something. And then when you click on the icon again, it'll show you exactly where you left off in the tutorials. You can easily switch back and forth between uh, the two. And the really nice feature is when um, the instruction is to start a specific tool. Um, you can now just click on the tool name and it'll uh, pop back to Galaxy and open the tool for you as well. So this really, um, you don't have to search for the tool manually, uh, you know, you always have the right tool open. So that's a really nice feature. 
So this is also great for uh, people who maybe have small screens, especially now that people are following um, from home a lot. Uh, so you don't need two screens or maybe split your screen between the tutorial and Galaxy, uh, but you can really lay the um, tutorials on top of Galaxy. Uh, now we have more support for instructors throughout the GTM. So for example, um, the slides have speaker notes. So if you press P for presenter mode, uh, when you've got the slides open, you will see a view like this and some speaker notes uh, to help you prepare uh, for teaching this, uh, this slide deck. And what we also do is for um, slides that have really high quality speaker notes, we can auto generate video slides using text to speech. Uh, so this way you can have uh, students simply just watch that auto generated video or you can use this to prepare for teaching yourself. So if you would like to see one of those in action, I think Dave showed it last week as well. So if you haven't seen that webinar yet, I would highly recommend you go do that. But there's also a link here in the slides uh, for you to check that out. Um, then there's another uh, fairly new feature. Uh, we've added now for every tutorial an FAQ page where we list some common questions and their answers. So things that students have often asked when someone was teaching this tutorial. Uh, and this again can help you uh, prepare for teaching a tutorial like this, especially when it's maybe not um, your area of expertise. Um, and the idea is that this is also very much a community effort. So if you teach something and you get the same question a couple of times from students or just any question you think that might be useful for other learners to see or other teachers to see, please um, consider contributing that back to these FAQ pages to, to help others. Um, and yeah, all of this is really a community effort. So here you see our Hall of Fame. We have 176 contributors right now who helped um, create all these tutorials and keep them up to date. And with such a big community, we have new tutorials added all the time and new topics even uh, added regularly. And based on feedback from these instructors and contributors, we often add uh, new features to the GTN and even to Galaxy. So yeah, it's a really cool community driven project. Okay. Well, once you have a tutorial all, um, all figured out, you found one that you would like to teach uh, in your workshop or in your class, um, then you need a place to run it. So you need a galaxy. Well, the good news is you don't have to run your own galaxy. You don't have to um, yeah, be a systems administrator or talk to the IT department to run it. There are plenty of public galaxy servers that you can use. So every tutorial at the top you see in this overview box, there is this um, under supporting materials, you have the section called available on these galaxies. And if you click on that, you get this list of all the galaxies um, that support this tutorial. So where you can just go and all the tools you need for this tutorial will be available. Um, and another very nice thing is um, something called TIAS. TIAS stands for Training Infrastructure as a Service. Uh, it's currently available on the European Galaxy server and soon to be available on Galaxy Main and Galaxy Australia. But uh, what this is, is um, you can sort of uh, apply for special resources, dedicated resources for your event, for your workshop or your, your course. Um, there's a little overview here. So normally uh, all the users of a Galaxy server, they do their analysis, they start jobs, and those jobs go in a queue and you might have to wait a little bit of time before it's your turn. Now, of course, uh, during a workshop, you don't have a lot of time to, to wait around. So if the server is busy, you might end up waiting a little bit longer than, than you would like for, for your jobs to finish. So what you can do is you can apply for TIAs and then you get sort of your own special dedicated queue with some special resources behind it so that your uh, participants, your learners don't have to wait in the regular queue. And it also provides a nice little dashboard where you can monitor the progress of everybody who joined your event. Now, if you want this, this is a really nice service. Uh, I use it all the time myself. I, I love it. Uh, if you want to use this, you can apply. It's all free. 
Um, they'll ask you for some information. So when is your workshop? Uh, how many people are you expecting? What exactly are you going to teach? So if you're using GTN tutorials, you can just provide them the link and they'll know exactly okay, which tools you're expecting to run. And based on that, uh, they can estimate how many resources they should uh, preserve for you. <coughs> uh, but all of that they will handle. Uh, and what you get back is a URL, a join link, and the only thing you need to do is get students at the start of, uh, of your training or of your lesson to click that link so to join the special queue to tell Galaxy, hey, I'm part of this, this training, put me in, this, in the special queue. Uh, and that's it, the rest is all uh, hidden behind the scenes, but it works really well. Um, so if you're going to teach a Galaxy event, uh, whether that's like a single day or a longer running course, um, it doesn't matter but I would highly recommend requesting TIAs for, for your events. Now this is the dashboard I was talking about. So uh, you also get a link to this sort of overview page. So you see here at the top, there is uh, an overview of the tools that have been run. So I can see, for example, here, the tool feature counts has run 27 times uh, and nobody got an error. So if I know that I have 27 students in my class, uh, I'm thinking, okay, everybody's done. If I know that I have 50, I can see here that, okay, about half the people have reached this step in the tutorial. Uh, so this is good to get a little bit of an overview. And below you see more detailed uh, information about um, individual jobs. And you can see green means it's okay. And if you see a lot of red, you know, okay, people are having difficulties with this particular tool. Maybe I should go check on that or re-explain, uh, things like that. And especially for remote training, this is very uh, useful because of course it's a little bit harder to see the progress when you're not physically in the room with people. You can't walk over and look at their screens anymore or, or ask them. So this is really a nice feature for that. Uh, now, if you do want to um, host a Galaxy workshop, you've picked out your tutorials, you've found Galaxy server to run on, perhaps requested TIAs, and then you're going to go into the other um, details of organizing your workshop. And we also have a special topic in the GTN with some tutorials and guides um, to help you do this. So we provided some checklists um, that, of things you might want to think about before your workshop, during your workshop, and after the event. Um, some tips and tricks for instructors for on the day. Uh, just some, some things that different people have learned from doing this um, that might be useful for others. Uh, we have a, um, a slide deck that you can use to start your workshop off that explains a little bit um, how things might work during the, the workshop. And if you do want to configure your own Galaxy server to support the training, uh, if you already have one running or uh, for whatever reason you would like to run your own, um, we have tutorials for that as well. And a Docker image per topic uh, to maybe make this a little bit easier. Now, maybe you um, have uh, want to teach something that you can't find in the GTN, but you, uh, you have your own materials maybe uh, somewhere else and you would like to add these to the GTN. Uh, we would love to have um, any and all tutorials. And we have a special topic that really walks you through everything you need to know about how to contribute your own tutorial to the GTN. So how to write these tutorials, how to write your slides, how to use GitHub. Uh, and we are very happy to help you here. We know, um, especially the first time, you might need a little bit of extra, extra help. So you can always contact us. Um, and of course, this big community of 200 uh, others who have uh, done this before, so they're very happy to, to help you here. Now, if you do contribute, um, you'll of course get uh, credit for, for your edition, so you'll be listed at the top of all the tutorials, you'll be listed on the slides, and everybody gets their own contributor page listing all their contributions uh, across the GTN. And if you're curious to see, like, okay, I made this tutorial, but are people using it? Um, you can also view that. So we um, track metrics for all these pages. So if you go to the extras menu at the top um, and then go to page metrics, you will get um, a page like this a little bit. You can see the number of views of the tutorial over time. You can see where in the world um, people are viewing it from. 
the devices they've used and all sort of stats like that. And of course, uh, the community is the greatest thing about this. So um, we have a Gitter chat channel where um, we can just talk to each other both about the GTM materials or running workshops or finding events to go to. Um, also, if you might would like to maybe get a few extra instructors to help teach your event, um, feel free to ask here and then you might find some people willing to, to, to help or to travel or anything. Um, so this chat uh, you can find here and it's also accessible from the web page uh, of the GTN itself. And if you want to see any upcoming Galaxy related events, including training events, um, here's a link to the events page. And we really encourage anybody who is using Galaxy uh, for teaching to also add their events here. And of course, we're very curious to hear from you, uh, your experience using Galaxy for teaching, using the GTN materials. Um, so we have a special form for people who've used this as an instructor. It's also found at the end of every tutorial uh, in the feedback section. Um, or maybe you want to start maybe um, a discussion about a certain topic uh, around Galaxy or how Galaxy can be improved, how the GTN materials may be improved to support teaching further. Um, you can do that on GitHub. Uh, the links are in here. So you see we have different, um, just different um, discussions with, with Galaxy instructors. Uh, then we also have regular collaboration fests, co-fests. So every three months on the third Thursday, we have a day dedicated to working on uh, GTN related activities. So we have three community calls in three different time zones. So here we just uh, have a Zoom call together. We discuss a little bit. Um, we'll tell you a little bit about the changes to the GTN in the recent months and our plans for the future. Um, you can give us feedback, uh, tell us about any events you've hosted or are planning, uh, what things you need help with, things you are just wondering about, um, all of that. Um, yeah, you can come to those calls and we'll be available uh, all day for support on Gitter. So if you wanna do some hands-on or creating your own tutorials or updating tutorials, or maybe just you would like some help in organizing your workshop. Um, yeah, feel free to drop by uh, one of these calls and and, uh, and talk to us. So the next one is May 20th. Um, and really everybody's welcome, whether you're brand new to the GTN or have already made several tutorials. Um, yeah, just join and talk to us. So if you wanna join this, there's a link in the slides to to get more information, including how to sign up. Okay, so uh, the next part of this webinar will consist of several examples of using Galaxy for, uh, for training using the GTM materials. So I will start off uh, sharing very briefly uh, our own experiences with uh, fully remote and hybrid style trainings. Um, and some of the other speakers will cover using Galaxy in a high school setting, in a university setting, um, or in research institutes to uh, educate um, later career scientists. And we have one nice example about using Galaxy as part of a citizen science um, outreach activity. Okay, so remote global training. So uh, of course with the COVID pandemic recently, um, in-person events weren't possible anymore. And so we've um, experimented a bit with using Galaxy completely uh, remotely. And this actually worked very well. And in February, we had hosted the GTN Smorgasbord event together with uh, Helena Russia, we organized that. So this event was a five day, 24 seven uh, nonstop event across all time zones. We had 1200 registrations from 78 different countries and we use a completely asynchronous format. So this meant that all uh, training sessions were pre-recorded and available on YouTube. We had over 40 uh, sessions of more than 25 hours of video material. And the idea was that participants could start these sessions whenever they want, they could stop, they could take breaks, they could really manage their own time around everything else in their schedules. And they would come to Slack chat for support. So 
they're following these video tutorials, following along on Galaxy. And if they had questions about the science or they got stuck, um, they went to Slack, they typed the question, and one of over 60 instructors from around the world uh, would help them uh, answer their questions. So this, this format really worked well um, to, to support a global audience. Um, and we really hope to make this an annual event. Um, so hopefully next year we'll do the same thing, pandemic or no pandemic. Um, if you want to read more about this, there's a link here to a blog post. But uh, yeah, it's really a nice training for, for us to organize. Um, now, since we did this event, uh, we now have a very big catalog of video tutorials as well. So all these videos um, consisted of an instructor basically running through the tutorial step by step and guiding instructor or guiding participants through a tutorial. Uh, and now these are all freely available on YouTube. And these are all free to use if you want to reuse some of them in your own course, in your own event, uh, you're free to do so. Um, the, the event webpage is also still up and usable. So here you see, for example, you see our schedule. We had these sessions on day one. And if you click on one of them, you get a view like here on the right, you get uh, the videos embedded, you get some information about the session, where to run, link to supporting materials like slides and everything. Uh, you might need a uh, FAQ document, uh, where to ask questions on Slack uh, and things like that. Uh, so this is a nice additional resource um, for, for other instructors as well. And if we're gonna do this type of event every year, these videos will also stay uh, up to date pretty well. Um, so our hope for the future is to sort of offer this catalog as sort of a shopping cart style uh, interface where you can sort of select which modules, which trainings you would like to teach in your workshop. Uh, and then you get uh, a website like this, but tailored specifically to your event. And we also want to offer all the other things that sort of we developed as part of, of this training and that we uh, uh, discussed with other people doing similar events. So you have, you would get a website like this very easily. You would get a Slack space where people can ask questions that's already configured. Uh, we could share our communications plan with you so we can just show you. This is what we did in terms of promoting the event, um, sending emails to participants, things like that. And we can also share our registration forums, our feedback forums, all of that to hopefully uh, make it even easier for you to host a similar event uh, for your for your event. Um, yeah. Now something slightly similar is hybrid training, and the Australian BioCommons uh, bioinformatics community has become very uh, experienced at that. And we do something similar for a project called Gallantries. So. I'll um, present those two to you now. So in Australia, they've used this approach a lot. Of course, Australia is a very big place and it's not so easy necessarily to travel between um, between different cities in, in Australia. So what they've been doing for years now <coughs> is hybrid training. So hybrid training is a combination of remote and in-person formats um, and how they do that here is um, you have one instructor teaching behind a camera. So here you see Anna. Anna is facing a camera, but you see she's alone in a room. She doesn't have a class uh, in front of her, but she is teaching these tutorials. And that is live streamed to several classrooms across the region. Uh, and you see here uh, Anna's view. So she is teaching here about assembly. Uh, on Zoom and she sees a feed from the different um, classrooms in her screen. And then in one of these classrooms, you see there's a group of students, they have their laptops, they're following along. Um, and you also have dedicated helpers um, to communicate maybe back to Anna. Um, if people are falling behind, maybe tell her, okay, can you slow down? Can you repeat the step or explain a little bit more about that? So each classroom has, um, instructors to, to help these students if they get stuck and helpers to communicate back to the main presenter. So this is a really nice format and works really well for them. And if you wanna read more, they have published here and there's a, a link in the slide. Now for another project, we have been uh, 
employing a similar format, this hybrid training. So uh, the project is called the Gallantries and it's called that because it's a mix between Galaxy and the Carpentries. Now, for those of you who don't know the Carpentries, this is bioinformatics training, but it focuses more on coding and using the command line. Um, so for the Gallantries project, we've tried to combine both these things. So we have a set of tutorials for uh, RNA-seq that start off with the initial analysis in Galaxy and then do some downstream analysis um, using R and Python, both inside Galaxy, so without leaving Galaxy. Um, so for example, using R for some, some nice visualizations and things like that. So this is, uh, yeah, a really nice little set of tutorials if you want to combine coding with Galaxy. And our plan was also to deliver this with this hybrid uh, format, except with the COVID pandemic now, we've changed it in the past year to a fully um, remote format. Um, but yeah, the idea is to get back to hybrid when it's possible again. And over the next couple of years, we will also expand the number of tutorials um, that sort of combine this coding with Galaxy to other topics as well, so beyond just RNA-seq. And if you already want to try sort of these programming environments inside Galaxy, um, you can do so, for example, by going to live.usegalaxy.eu. So you can click on these and you will get our studio or a Jupyter notebook right inside Galaxy. And there are some special um, special functions to sort of move data from your uh, your history um, to, to the coding environment and back. So check it out, it's really cool. And that was all from my side. So uh, now I'll hand over to the other speakers of today, uh, but I'll be available for a Q&A session at the end of uh, this webinar. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Saskia. That was great. Um, up next, uh, we have Christine Cucinata of the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. Uh, she is a postdoc and she's working with high school students and using Galaxy. Okay, Christine, take it away. That is correct. Can you hear me? Am I yes. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much. And um, first of all, I just want to say the Galaxy training network is amazing. And I feel like I've only scratched the surface of it while, while working with um, high school and undergraduate students. Um, using Galaxy. So I'm just going to give you give you all kind of like a case study of how I've used Galaxy to train high school students. Um, and as uh, was mentioned, I'm a postdoc at uh, Fred Hutch in the Tsukiyama lab. And our lab focuses on how uh, gene expression changes occur during the cell cycle. And we focus on the chromatin environment on that. Um, so the the, pro the program that I am mentoring with is um, one of Fred, Hutch's, Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center's Science, edu Science Education Partnership. I apologize, it's a little early here in the West Coast um, for high school students. And what the idea of this is to um, allow uh, high school students to work with researchers at Fred Hutch. And this year, as many programs have become, it's completely virtual. And so um, the way this works is mentors can be group leaders, staff scientists, uh, postdocs, grad students, technicians, and it runs throughout the entire school year. And for me, I meet with my students. Uh, I have two students and I meet with them one-on-one -on -one and in a group setting each week. And then they work with pro program leaders, uh, talk about other topics as well. So about students spend about six hours per week in total reading and working on their analysis for projects. Um, and so, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our lab is focusing on gene expression uh, programs in the uh, model organism budding yeast. And like many genomics labs, we have a lot of data to analyze and probably more than we can handle right now. So it's been a great opportunity to incorporate the use of Galaxy to mentor high school students and undergraduate students um, in helping us uh, complete uh, create new uh, projects and analyze data. So a lot of the data sets that we focus on are um, ChIP-seq, MNAS, and RNA-seq data sets and a mixture of paired end and single end. So they can learn a lot of uh, sequencing concepts through those as well. And I will say the Galaxy tutorials have been fantastic for this. Um, 
So the overall project that I've given them is to understand how cells uh, re-express re their gene expression from a state of dormancy. And so I've given them uh, data sets that have already been uh, published in the lab, and they are now taking um, these raw data sets of PAL2 RNA polymerase uh, ChIP-seq single end data sets and um, looking for basically learning how to align the reads and do further analysis. And I'm going to tell you what they did here in a second, but just kind of get an idea. I'm not going to belabor the, the biology behind this at all, but uh, the idea is that they're looking for genes that are getting activated and then asking questions regarding those genes. Are they uh, controlled by specific transcription factors, for example? So it's kind of an exploratory project uh, centered around this uh, data analysis. So um, as I mentioned, uh, the students can use this PAL2 chip-seq data. So they're only working with one type of data in the very beginning, single end. Um, it's a bit more simple. Uh, and they everything usually, for the most part, has been contained in deep tools, which is available on Galaxy. And this has been a really great um, environment for the students to explore their data. And so at this point, I've given students uh, freedom to choose gene sets of interest and have them formulate their own hypotheses so they can kind of diverge in their projects at this point. So they can ask which genes are induced, which genes never induce from this uh, cell cycle progression stage. And then again, like because we're a chromatin lab, they can actually look specifically at uh, what is the chromatin state. So then we can introduce a new data type, MNA-seq data and paired end data. And then they can also look at uh, uh, sequence motifs of these genes of interest. Um, so one of my high school students has actually um, done a lot, made a lot of progress, or both of them have made a lot of progress, but I'm just gonna talk about one of their projects. Um, so they, um, one high school student basically uh, found about 800 activated genes uh, that have a common have a common motif for trans a yeast transcription factor, and it, this uh, motif with, or the genes the targets for this transcription factor uh, were 30 fold higher. The um, expression of these genes was about 30 fold higher higher than what has been seen during normal growth conditions. So this was very new information for us. Um, and so at this point, he decided that he would focus on this transcription factor and what genes this transcription factor might control. And so um, then he wanted to know what is the chromatin environment here. And so he looked at um, paired end MNA seq data and found that the chromatin architecture was likely uh, re re rearranged during uh, at these locations. And since we're a chromatin lab, we went ahead and um, we actually had a lot of chromatin data. So he then um, went through all of our data sets on his own and um, found actually some very interesting co-localizations. And a reminder, this is a high school student and I actually kind of glossed over the fact that we did spend some time going over the central dogma. What is, what is DNA, what is RNA? So we're going from very basic understanding to actually doing this analysis and coming up with his own hypotheses. And so here he found uh, some co-localizations with this transcription factor target and chromatin uh, remodeling factors. And so now in the lab, we're actually testing his hypothesis um, that this transcription factor candidate can actually target these uh, remodeling factors. And um, so far this um, has been uh, basically, um, you know, giving them a lot of uh, freedom to ask their own questions um, and having the tools and the tutorials, especially from the Galaxy Training Network, has really given them their own, like empower them to ask their own questions and actually like come up with these hypotheses. And um, while this has been all remote in the lab, uh, I am able to be there and I can pipette. And so actually right now I'm testing uh, one of uh, the, my students' hypotheses specific for one example is do these transcription factors target uh, certain remodelers, for example, um, to these genes that are activated. And so I was really excited because he actually found uh, these 800 genes and um, where they are targeted here. And um, the he found very striking co-localizations there. So I was really impressed with how um, quickly the students um, were able to get up and running. And I think taking away the, um, you know, the 
the technicalities of like programming command, command line really allowed them to think about science as uh, Saskia mentioned earlier. Um, and I think that this is really a testament to how useful Galaxy can be in training students, um, especially those who haven't learned even what uh, what a gene is yet. So I, I think that this was really exciting. Um, I kind of spoke a lot faster than I intended, um, but I kind of wanted to end here um, mentioning that um, there are other, uh, there are a lot of reasons to use Galaxy and um, in training high school students and undergraduates and this Galaxy training network has been very useful with all of the tutorials, especially for ChIP-seq. They're, they're really great tutorials on how to analyze ChIP-seq data sets. Um, and the other great thing has been you're able to uh, outreach a lot of students across the country or the world, depending on what kind of mentoring program you are in. Um, you don't need to require any university access since we can even just do this on the main Galaxy platform. Um, and you can get projects up and running really quickly thanks to not needing to have a special environment set up for each uh, analysis pipeline. And I just wanted to leave here. There are actually a couple of uh, virtual mentoring programs where you could actually institute similar ideas where you're giving students data from published, either published data sets or if you're in a lab situation and you have uh, data laying around that really needs to be analyzed, you can actually like use it as a teaching tool and give students an idea of um, how to create their own hypothesis. And so two of them are, one is geared toward the undergraduate level, and it's called the National Summer Undergraduate Research Program, or NSERP, and you can apply to be a mentor there, and it's nsrp.org. Then uh, a global uh, high school level program is called Athena Women in STEM, and I've participated in both and had excellent students in both programs. So um, with that, I guess I will uh, finish, and I think we're taking questions at the end, is that correct? So. Um, Correct. I will answer questions as I apologize if I spoke too fast. <laughs> no, that was good. That was great. Thank you, Christine. Um, and you have a question at the end, so this is good. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to start sharing, I hope. Uh, share screen. Good. Okay. And then, okay. Let's try it. Share. Okay. So up next is Miamao Zhao. And uh, she's, <laughs> I tried me, I know. Um, she's, uh, she's faculty at the Evans Hoog School in the Netherlands, and she's going to talk about um, Galaxy in a university setting. Yes, thank you, Dave, for your uh, introduction. Um, yes, everyone, um, I'm Miao Miao. So uh, I'm uh, working in the Evans University of Applied Sciences. Yeah, we, we do have the English name. Uh, we are located in Breda in the Netherlands. Uh, so, yeah, our university has 18 academies and I work in the Academy of Life Sciences and Environmental Sciences um, as the Data Education Coordinator. Uh, we started to use Galaxy in a few years. Well, this is the fourth year we use Galaxy for teaching. So things are going quickly. Uh, in our school, we have five, uh, four departments. That's a biomedicine education. Uh, chemical engineering, chemistry, and environmental sciences. So I will introduce a little bit what we are doing in the biomedicine education. And Dave, please, next slide. Yes, um, so we start to introduce uh, Galaxy in year two. We give students a 20 weeks project. These students team up and their project is half wet, half dry. They spent four wet lab sessions. So actually those are days, four days in the wet lab. They will have to grow their own um, materials and afterwards they use a uh, minion for sequencing. Uh, after that, it's always six days of dry lab sessions by using Galaxy. This year we've chosen the topic to be bacteria, uh, drug resistant bacterial strain sequencing. Um, well, students got four different strains from uh, REVN, which is our National Institute of Public Health and Environment. Yeah, so it is a real, true, identified drug resistant bacteria, but the students will have to re-identify and to recreate the scientific funding that people already yeah, found in the labs. So um, this works. Uh, for the Galaxy part, 
we decided to make our own Galaxy tutorials because the students are year two. They are um, very enthusiastic, but when the tutorials go too deep, they get lost. So we, uh, we made our own tutorials and more will be uh, available in the Galaxy training um, hub uh, because we want to dedicate to the community. So um, yeah, this year we do uh, drug resistance bacterial strain sequencing. Um, next year, maybe we will do environmental DNA sequencing. In this way, we can roll on and attract more students. So this is for year two setting. And for year three, uh, Dave, can you please uh, go to the next slide? Uh, for year three students, uh, we use we use the Shmugash boards, videos and training materials really um, effectively, we try to. So one of the example that I list here is the RNASEC course that we give to our students. There are eight sessions that they have to complete. And this is two ECTS, European credits, that's 28 hours per credit. And the course is set up with a really um, a pattern. So the students always have to prepare by watching the videos provided by the training hub. Uh, thank, I, I would like to say thank you all for the speakers. Those are great videos, much better than myself uh, in the classes. So uh, afterwards, during the classes, students will have a PowerPoint um, provided that by me and my colleagues to give them a theory. Afterwards, students use the online tutorials. They build their own workflows by using the materials. Um, so for example, RNASEC, they are using the fruit flies. But by using the fr fruit flies, they have a workflow to evaluate their outcomes because this is a two ECTS class. We give them a novel data set from a cancer research that we just published. So everyone gets a part of that data set. They have to reapply the workflows that they built by uh, using fruit flies uh, on these cancer data sets. So they have to revise, work together, brainstorm, ask questions, and write a small report. And this is one of the cases that we apply to the students. We also have the NGS class. We also have the metabolomics classes. And at the moment, we are trying to build up a course in a similar fashion by using existing Galaxy training materials for our environmental science, uh, sciences students in the ecology class. And the rationale that we have by here by using Galaxy is that we want to focus on teaching RNASEC. We do not want to teach students programming or bash in a limited amount of time. We have only 56 hours. If we spend half of that to teach students bash, and most of them get stuck with a very badly documented error message in the middle of a bash command, hey, where is the part of RNASEC? Our students are biomedicine students who will end up in the lab, becoming a person who's going to sequence all the samples. Um, there will be bioinformaticians to help with real hardcore um, bioinformatics questions to analyze the data and go straight forward to the answer of the questions. Well, we say Galaxy is one of the best options. And Dave, can you please go to the next slide? Um, so that was the part that we used for teaching our students. Uh, now I'm going to show you what we are doing with our teachers. Uh, as interesting as it sounds, uh, we have 85% of our teachers have a PhD diploma. Many of them uh, worked as a researcher before they came to our school as a teacher. Um, however, teachers started to get nervous because nowadays in biology, at least, the technique renews really rapidly. Every four to eight years, there is a complete renewal of techniques. And the data that we are generating is getting bigger and bigger. 
people are starting, people start to be nervous. So we decide, okay, we are going to teach our teachers how to generate big data with a new technology and also how to analyze your data properly. Uh, so luckily we were selected uh, with the Dutch National Funding Scheme for Education and the project is from the um, subsidy category called Comenius. Um, it is 100,000 euro for 18 months. And there we choose for the subject big data, we use Galaxy. Um, there we let our teaching assistants, those are technicians in the wet lab, our teachers, our project leaders and students, we let them learn side by side because the technology is new. Then it's new to everyone. So the perspectives between um, teachers and the students get exchanged rapidly. Um, it's really fun to see them sitting next to each other, try to find out how Galaxy works. So by far we used uh, NGS uh, data input and we use Galaxy workshops uh, to in this project for metabolomics uh, because we generate a lot of data by using LCMS. So this is another part that we're doing uh, not only with students, but teachers and students together. Uh, Dave, if you move to the last slide, then I will show you a little bit what we are doing only for the teachers. So we just started a new project called uh, ABCDS. So it's Advanced Bootcamp of Data Skills. There we focus on upgrading the data skills in our teachers. Um, meanwhile, when teachers are um, upgraded, hopefully with the skills, we they will automatically upgrade our curriculum. Uh, we have an ambition. So our school always have this five years ambition. And uh, this before 2025, uh, one of our ambitions is to add data education uh, everywhere in our curriculum. And there for, dry, uh, for data analysis and big data, we decide to use Galaxy again. Uh, meanwhile, we will upgrade our own dry lab facilities, which we will have a dedicated Galaxy server because in our uh, students' projects, sometimes we receive samples from the hospitals, then the data will be confidential. So that's a little bit um, a overview of what we are doing in our uh, School of uh, Life Sciences and Environmental Sciences. Um, I hope this uh, will give you a little bit of the flavor what we are doing and uh, with the existing materials of what we try to um, produce in the coming years to support the community. So that's uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention. Yeah. Thank you, Mamma. Uh, yeah, that was great. Uh, let's see. Up next is Sabina Maheta who is with the University of Minnesota, and she's gonna talk about training for research scientists. Hi, uh, hello all, uh, thanks Dave. Uh, my name is Sabina Mehta, and I'm a member of uh, the Galaxy for Proteomics team. We are at the University of Minnesota. Um, I think by now, all of the panelists have already shared how great Galaxy training network is uh, in their experience for teaching. Uh, so today, uh, I'm basically going to share my experience and a few pointers for training research scientists uh, using the GTN, uh, which has definitely been a great experience for myself. Uh, next slide, please, Dave. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so the first question is, why should you use GTN training? Uh, firstly, I would say that is to, it is to introduce new topics to researchers. Uh, could be earlier career researchers or later career researchers. Uh, it is easy to use uh, with slides or videos. Uh, secondly, to keep everyone up to date with the latest tools and workflows available. Uh, for example, I usually teach, teach at conferences or at the university-based setting. Uh, we usually conduct workshops when we want to introduce um, the work we have been doing in our lab. Uh, following the latest developments in the field. 
Uh, sometimes we cover the happening topic uh, or we want to share our thoughts on a particular topic. So the benefit of such training is that we can usually foster interest in fellow scientists who are part of the same field that could eventually lead them uh, becoming your collaborators. The second question is how to do the training or conduct workshop. Uh, from my experience, there are two ways. Uh, you could use a demo wherein the trainers can record their videos, post it on YouTube or Vimeo or any other publicly available resource. The benefit of these uh, demos are that the trainers can use it in their own pace, uh, their own Galaxy instance, and the attendees can also learn at their own pace in the case of, uh, like in the case of the GTN Smartest Fold. Or we can also do a hands-on in-person workshop wherein the trainers can use any of these, uh, any of the instances mentioned on the right or request a TIAS to use Galaxy EU, which has been really a great experience for us. Uh, the benefit of in-person training is that you can provide a step-by-step -step instruction while the trainees are following you. And it also helps you explain each of these steps very clearly. The only issue or drawback that I have seen that is that you have to mention prior to the workshop that they have to bring their laptops with them. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so once you decide on how to train, the next, plan, uh, next part is how to plan. You have to plan your training. When we are planning our workshop, we usually develop our own tutorials as most of the time they are a part of our new scientific publication. Uh, for example, the meta transcriptomics uh, tutorial that you just see on the screen is a part of our uh, journal paper. So what we do is we create this GTN as a part of our journal article to make people familiarize with the topic and also to give them a step-by-step -step instruction on how to use the workflow we've developed and the benefits of using it. However, we, you can also decide on using a tutorial that is previously developed by others, uh, which you might have found interesting and thought it was beneficial for everyone to know. And if nothing else, you can decide on creating your own tutorial as previously mentioned, and there is a lot of help for that. Next slide, please. Now, a few pointers before conducting your training or workshop is, the first thing is test the tutorial yourself. Make sure it works. If you are the person who have written it, then ask people in your lab or someone else with less experience to test your training to ensure it works well, as well as they will provide you with valuable feedbacks. Frequently during our workshops, uh, we use trim data sets or like smaller data sets for training purposes to ensure that the workflows are not time consuming. We also try to test how long our workflows run so that it's in the time constraint. If for some reason we are not able to trim our data sets or uh, it is, uh, the workflow is too time consuming or there are some tools which take too long to run, then we provide a walkthrough or uh, something called a cookbook style workshop wherein we show the attendees what the input files are uh, needed, how to run the workflow, what the parameters are, and show them the output that they get from the uh, workflow. In that case, the most important thing is to prepare example histories, as nothing could go wrong if you have example histories showing the output of your uh, output of your tool or output of your workflow. Next slide, please. Uh, while conducting your uh, workshop or training in person, the first thing is to make sure is you give the users or attendees enough time to follow the tutorial. A few basic things to remember is that, from my experience, is that firstly, give basic introduction to Galaxy and its features. Secondly, provide basic background pertaining to your topic. Thirdly, be very slow. Ensure that everybody is on the same page. And at the end, allow a question and answer session because that's how you will know whether the attendees have understood your topic or not. Next slide, please. Now, if most of the questions uh, are already answered during your training session, uh, 
sometimes what happens is that the attendees still have more question and there's no time, not enough time to do it during the workshop, then we can offer them channels such as Slack or Gitter where they can interact with the trainers. You can also provide them with FAQ Google Docs. Next slide, please. Once your workshop is over, uh, please feel free to ask for feedbacks. It's not just to know how many people attended your workshop or the quantity of your workshop, but also to attend, uh, also to understand the drawbacks. Uh, like, was your workshop too quick? Was it too slow? Was it informative? Was it productive? Was it valuable enough for them to perform their own research? Where shall you improve in your, uh, in your training? If you are using the GTN for the feedback, then at, each, that at the end of each training uh, tutorial, there are feedback forms. Or you can also decide to create your own feedback form. Personally, I have benefited a lot from uh, these feedbacks because they have helped me improve the content of my tutorials. Next slide, please. Uh, just to wrap up my part, a few take home messages. Uh, why to use GTN training? Because it's truly user friendly and provides a step by step instruction, which is very beneficial. Second, preparation, preparation, preparation. Cannot reiterate more than that. It is needed for your training for sure. Third, test your training material and be mindful of the time. Fourth, uh, user communication is very important. Communicate with your attendees uh, during and after the training. Lastly, feedback is truly important for improving your quality of your tutorials, making your content better. Um, thank you for listening to me. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to contact me and at my email address provided here. Thank you. Thank you, Sabina, that was wonderful. Um, it, it is a very common case to use Galaxy for training of researchers, so. Okay, our last presentation today. Oh, first of all, if you need to go at the hour, you're late because we're two minutes over the hour, but don't worry, we'll record stuff and publish it later this week. So if you need to go, go, otherwise stick around for the last talk and for Q and A, okay. So last talk today is from Bernice, um, excuse me, Batu from the University of Freiburg. And she's gonna talk about Galaxy for teaching pupils and citizen science. So let's go there and play. Hello everybody. So I'm Berenice Batu, a researcher at the University of Freiburg. And now I will uh, show you how we use Galaxy for reaching and teaching pupils, uh, a broad audience, mostly pupils and citizens with the Street Science Project. So the Street Science Project was started by researcher and some teacher at the University of Freiburg. And one of, uh, with the aims of um, introducing biology and genomics to a broad audience. And one of our key projects currently is the Beer Decoded Projects, which is an immersion into biology, bioinformatics, and science via beers and their yeast. So in this uh, project, uh, we organize one or two, one, mostly two days, uh, practical workshops on Beer Decoded to give um, pupils that we reach with their schools and citizens um, the way to, that they can learn about DNA, sequencing technologies, bioinformatics, open science, possible and their possible application and the impact of all of it in everyone's life. So how are these uh, workshops organized? So we take some beers, we extract the DNA of the yeast there directly with them. So they do it on their own. So we teach them, we show them how to do that, we do that with them, we develop some uh, from simple um, work protocol for that, we do the sequencing, we're using min uh, Minion, and once we got the DNA sequence, we do the data analysis to, ex to, to try to identify what yeast we can find in the peers. Um, and so I will not go in, depth, in details about the, the, the first steps of extraction and sequencing, but for the data analysis, um, you will expect, so we, we use um, Galaxy and we develop, uh, specifically we add a, a dedicated interface using the streetscience.usegalaxy.eu and we develop so 
some workflow for that using uh, microbiome uh, available tools. We share uh, data that we generated with sequencing in shared data libraries. And we managed to organize one or two several workshops where we did that with pupils and citizens. Um, because it's not possible since the beginning of the pandemics to organize workshops, we are now moving uh, to, we are currently developing online games using uh, Galaxy in the back, where we could uh, teach, the, where the people can learn about microbiome data analysis within Galaxy. But currently it's still an ongoing project. If you are interested and we would like to participate, feel free to reach me. Um, and otherwise we will uh, share the news about that later when we will have more details about that. On that, I would like to thank you and thanks. Okay. Oh, thank you, Berenice, and thanks to everyone, um, all the presenters. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, that was great. Um, I do have to say, Berenice, that of a, a whole set of cool talks, you had the coolest topic. So thank you. Um, let's see. So we have time for question and answer. Uh, we have one question so far. Well, we had two, but Sabina answered one of them. The question is for Christine. So um, if the panelists want to turn on their mics, that would be great. Um, how steep is the learning curve for the students? Yeah, so I would say galaxy wise, it's pretty, thanks. I, I sound like a preacher, but honestly, it's really been very, very helpful. Honestly, I think the bioinformatics side has been very low learning curve. And I think that at, that's just a testament to the beauty of the, um, pr the interface. The biggest learning curve has been more in the biological concepts, but um, I think spending these one on one uh, meetings, not just going over analysis, but also going over the basics and allowing the students to ask questions, being super approachable and friendly, I think has been very helpful because then they're not afraid to ask questions and then you can really help them get up to speed, I think, on um, these concepts. Very good. Thanks for the question. Okay. Um, if you have questions, you can paste them in the Q&A, post them in the Q&A. I have a question for, for everyone, um, and this touches on the question that was just asked uh, on Christine. How do you deal with um, classrooms full of people that have a huge range of experience, a huge range of background, both in biology and in you know, comfort with computing, per se? So whoever wants to speak. So this, this happens a lot, especially when I teach uh, researchers. So some are very tech savvy and some aren't. So often I have a mix of like master students who, who know the computer well and older researchers who have trouble like copying links. So it's hard, it, it's always hard, but having lots of helpers around to help. So it's easier in an in-person in event, but if you have um, go slow, um, as the main teacher, but also have some helpers that it's okay if someone falls behind and they can sort of get help to, to get them back on track. I think that's the main thing. And same you could do with, um, with online classes. If you have sort of a second channel for communication, a uh, chat or a Zoom, um, a helper could, could help, uh, give individual help to, to people if they need it. Thank you. Anyone else? Want to touch that? Yeah, I, I would second Saskia. We usually have um, a group members like coming and helping us, like walking around the room basically to make ensure that everybody is on the same page and everybody is able to follow. We, uh, that's what I mentioned during my talk is initially we have to give them basic galaxy background to make sure that everybody knows how to navigate things around galaxy interface. And then during the tutorial, we have people going around and talking to people so that we make sure that they are understanding because yeah, everybody is on different wavelengths most of the time. Good. Thank you, Sabina. Um, question. Um, so Sabina included some things about support like Gitter and Slack. Um, I have a more basic question backing up. So today we're using Zoom. And Zoom is a popular choice, but do you all have a preferred platform for the 
you know, the live feeds, you know, things like this, Christine, you're nodding, so. I use Discord. It's sort of similar to Slack, but it's for video gamers. And I find that it's a little bit easier for students, like younger people, because they actually already have usually accounts. Um, and you don't have to have a separate login for each like server plot or channel. So actually, usually we have that going while we're discussing or actually students will ask me questions very similar to Slack, like in a direct message. But the cool thing, and I don't want to start selling Discord, but you can also really easily do voice chat and screen sharing in that. Um, so if the student or anyone has a quick question, you can be like, oh, we can just hop on. You don't have to make a separate Zoom meeting or anything like that. So honestly, it's actually a pretty great tool for teaching. Um, I would recommend, and if you have any questions, we actually have a temp. I run a Discord server for Chromatin people. We have a template wow. for my community if anyone's interested. Okay, thank you, Christine. <laughs> meow, meow, have you? How we are using Teams. Teams, oh, Microsoft, <laughs> Microsoft Teams. Very good. Yes. Yeah. So our school has just decided we will move to Microsoft to everything, including Azure. Uh, so that's really uh, well. But uh, the nice thing about uh, Teams is uh, we can create the classroom teams. You can give assignments to students. And there's a file um, folder that all the students can upload their .ga files. So uh, actually, we use that to check their performance. And the results can be exported easily in the format that we can use in our um, um, study record system called OSIRIS. Again, so that's easier to do. If you have uh, nine sessions with students and each time you have 160 students, well, that, that, that you need something that's automatic. So don't we use uh, Teams? It's fine. Very good. Thanks, Mima. Yeah. I'm Bernice. Have you got something to throw in? No, maybe. No, okay. I mean, we use Zoom already before the pandemic for the hybrid trainings. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I mean, I, I like it, quite I like it, but so I cannot, rem I cannot recommend something else. For the smokers board, they used Slack, which was quite useful there. Um, to especially, especially to organize. So Saskia and Elena did an amazing job to organize uh, the channels by tr by topics, so by tutorials, and it was really great then for the people to to find where to ask for to ask question there. And yeah. really, it was really nice. That was amazing how well that scaled. Yeah. So eleven hundred yeah. participants, and in Slack you could figure out where to ask the question, and you could figure out let's see where to answer it. Yeah, that was the easy part was where to answer it. But yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Okay, we are at 12 after the 13 after the hour. Oh man, time flies. Um, let's see, we do have an acknowledgement slide. Let's see if I can get there. And I will throw that up. Um, boom. Okay, and I will share that. And then, uh, first of all, while I do that, I would really like to thank all of you um, for presenting today. Some of you I did not even know. So um, thank you for doing that. Um, and thank you for responding for that. It's very indicative of the Galaxy training community, uh, the network that people are always willing to help. So um, that went really well. Uh, and we'd like to thank the funders for each of our speakers, as well as for the Galaxy training network itself. And I'd like to thank um, all of the participants for spending an hour and now 13 minutes with us. So. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop recording now if I can figure out how, and we'll close down the webinar. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Dave. You're a great DJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see if I can figure this out. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Everyone, have a nice day. Bye bye.